a how-to video on using the MTS-810 tensile compression system, which you can see here. So we have our uh, main hydraulic system with our, our lift to pull specimens up and down. We have our pneumatic controls over here to control the jaws. We have our computer to drive the system. I deliberately left everything off so I could show you the startup. When you power up on the power strip, you need to uh, fire off the computer. You will notice it is Windows XP. I realize for some of you that's uh, something of a history lesson, but it, just be aware it's not Windows 10. This is a slightly older software. We run the station manager, and do not run that until you see the MTS here waiting for system loader. You want to be able to see uh, that logo up on the computer here below. Just so you understand, this box below can run all the tests. It's just that you have to manually push the buttons. It's very analog. This gives us a digital interface, which is much, much easier to see. So you'll see that it loads up. We only have one configuration, so there isn't much choice. You just pick on that to load and then you can pick the different tests that are available. And again, you can see we have a bunch built for the different tests and it, it isn't incredibly important which one you open because you can change it later. Now, I want to power up the rest of the system. You'll notice everything is off. We turn the air on to the system, and then we can crank that up. Now that the machine's up and powered, we can set the pressure for the grips. That's done under here. The air is on, and you'll notice both of my valves are in the on position for the air. Then I can come underneath here using this knob set it to about between 20 and 40 pounds. The higher you set this, the tighter these grips will squeeze. Um, for steel, 30 is more than enough and it'll hold it just fine. It won't slip. The point is you don't want the sample slipping while we perform the test. But you don't want to go too high either because you just put more work on the system. Now that that's done, let's go back to the main controller and take a look. When this comes up, we hit this exclusive control. What this will do is give us full control from this menu and we are not using the computer underneath, feeding information up into the main computer. I turn on my hydraulics. The yellow is the warm up. You might even hear in the background a humming. And then when I'm ready to go, And now, everything's powered up. We have a manual control override that sets the height. You'll notice I'll turn that on, and you'll see I'm at 1.3786 inches. I can adjust that. I'll do it twice here so you can see it. I can slide the bar, and I can see and now I'm going to slide that bar up and down so you can see what happens. Okay. And there you go. So you can adjust that to the zero, give yourself room to move up and down. And then what you're going to do is back over here under station controls is the auto set button. That's where all this stuff comes in. I'll hit auto set. Brings up a new window. Each of these buttons brings up a different window. And you can see my displacement is set at 1.582 inches. Now I'll hit auto set. Now it's at zero. And we've zeroed the system. Very clever, How huh? Likewise, I can do that with the poundage and everything else. So I can zero the system out. And now we're ready to talk about the grips. Our sample mounts between our two grips, top and bottom, both hydraulically con controlled. Notice that the top grip stays stationary. It will fix to a certain height. I can adjust that height from down here. 
Underneath my emergency shut off, I have a closed and open. So I open the system and I can go down or up. And you'll notice I can just send that unit up or down. And again, all hydraulic control. I'm going to use a fairly short sample, so I'll come in here pretty tight. I'll get that figured out in a minute what that height needs to be. Our grips, we have a couple different types. We have a flat plate, and we have these notched for the round. And then in addition for real thin samples, we can put in spacer plates and do the like. Now the sample I'd like to use is a, a sample that's set with a strain gauge on it which we use for our uh, MEC 225 course. And you can see I've gripped this several times already. You can see the grip marks, the blue coating. It's 1018 steel. What we do is I get the bottom set first, and then I clamp that down. Now, how do you do that? Well, you use hydraulics over here. And if you can, I don't know if you can read that or not. Maybe I can pull this out a little bit. Well, no, I can't. That's heavy. You'll see lower grip and upper grip, and the two valves are for open and close. So let's look at the lower grip and put this sample in. Now this is best done with two people doing this off, thank you. So we'll set that lower grip in and get it down about two-thirds, there we go. Hold it tight, I'll make sure my cord is out of the way, and I'm going to close that. And I always make sure I, I close the top valve, and then I ask my person holding it, are you ready? And they acknowledge, you're ready, safe to go. Then I will use this lower valve, and now that is compressed in place. And that's being held with a force that is more than strong enough to hold this. And to do the top, I will again turn on my up and down here so I can control it. Remember, this is unlocked, locked. And I'll come down gently till I get to the right height, lock the system in place after I squeeze it tight. So I close the top valve and then close the bottom valve. And this is for the upper grip. I'll open it up. Notice now, good, and I can lock, and the system now moves up and down only with this, and I can move the system up and down and put a load on that strain gauge. And you can see over here, back on the menu, I'm at about 76 pounds, and I can zero that out. So there's a slight load on it from setting up, and that's to be expected. 